Hey guys, it's Jessica and today we are doing a video I've been preparing for for like a month and a half and I have been working on trying out all of these products from the brand Wander Beauty. I bought some of them. They sent me a lot of them, but as you guys know, I'm always honest whether something's sent to me or not. In fact, a lot of the makeup I try is sent to me and I give you the good and the bad. I do many, many best and worst videos. So this is a best and worst. There are some products I wasn't a huge fan of and there were other products that I liked, but I would change something about them. Like it wasn't 100% grade A amazing. But then there are also some products that I'm like, oh my gosh, I love these so much. So I figured giving these a month and a half, two months of trial every other day, you know, kind of throughout my week, I thought was a very good amount of time to really know how I feel about these. I want to start doing this more often with these brand best and worst. I usually will try things for at least a few weeks or a month, but I thought maybe giving it more time would help me develop even more thoughts on these products. And I was right because even today, as I was applying these, you'll see me applying pretty much every single product I mentioned, there were some new discoveries I made and I'm like, man, I've been trying these for months and I'm still discovering new things. So I want to share all of these with you. Most of what I'm wearing on my face is Wander Beauty. There were just some things I don't own in Wander Beauty. Like for example, I don't own a foundation, so I'm wearing something else. And it goes without saying, this is not sponsored. They're not paying me to do this video. So let me tell you a little bit about the brand. So first of all, it is cruelty free. It is a brand that their whole gimmick is that it's travel friendly. A lot of these are multitasking products you can use for more than one thing on your face. And not only that, but even the packaging of everything is travel friendly in some way. So I'll try to touch on that. The reason I was so excited to do this is because I travel all the time. My husband's a travel agent and like literally the next few months we're traveling like three or four times. So we do a lot of travel, both domestic and international, and finding products that can do more than one thing is huge to me. So as I mentioned each product, I'll show you me applying it, but I'll also show you the details about it. So the first thing I put on my face today is the Wander Beauty Glow Ahead Face Oil. This is very travel friendly in that it's a squeezy tube, which is, I don't know that I've ever had an oil, like a true oil that's in a squeezy tube, but you twist off the cap, and a little bit will drip out, but it has this tip where you can squeeze it, of course, and the oil will come out. This is a very lightweight oil, and the way they describe it is that it's eight different oils that are great for your skin. It does have a slight fragrance, which I don't love the fragrance of, to be honest. It's kind of a, it's a, I would consider it a fresh scent, but I just am not a big fan of it. But it dissipates pretty quickly where you're not noticing the smell anymore after about 30 seconds of having it on your skin. At least I don't. So I've really been enjoying this. I like that it's lightweight because if you're putting this oil on and then putting makeup on top of it, which I do because I use this in the daytime. You can use it at night too. I just pretty much only use it in the morning. Um, but I always put it on under makeup and it only takes about a minute or two to really sink into the skin. And that's something I really appreciate because sometimes I don't have a lot of time to get ready. And so for that reason, I'm like, this is awesome. Cause I do have some face oils. You guys know I'm like the queen of face oils. I love them so much. I did do a video on like why you should be using facial oils and how you can be using them even if you have oily skin. So I will link that video in the cards and then down below as well if you're interested or if you're just curious about why people are starting to use face oils. Um, as I read the reviews on this, a lot of the reviews on the Wander Beauty website were of people that have oily skin and they were like, I feel like I've never wanted to use oils because I had oily skin, but I used this and it was exactly what my skin needed. It still kept the oils at bay because it was kind of providing the oil my skin was trying to produce, but it was a little more controlled. Okay. Anyway, this stuff I really do like. I could see myself when I run out going out and buying this again. So... I put on, I've tried numerous ones of these. I have quite a few of these. These are their Baggage Claim Gold Eye Masks. I really like these. I have tried so many of the little under eye masks and I feel like either they don't stay on well enough while you're trying to get other stuff done or they're so difficult to position the right way or it'll like get in your eye. There's something about the shape of these and then the foilish kind of texture that they're made of that keeps them in place and they're comfortable to wear. Like I was walking around, I ended up going making more coffee, talking to Tyler, they're so comfortable to wear, which obviously you're only wearing them 10 to 15 minutes, but even still. So it says they brighten, they hydrate and reduce the appearance of dark circles. I'm gonna show you a before and after. And I do see a slight difference. Do I think this is gonna absolutely change your life and get rid of bags forever? No, of course not. No product can do that yet. But I do, I did see some brightness, a little bit of a reduction in maybe the tired look under my eye. 
and I appreciate that. I use them today and I think my under eyes actually look better than they usually do. I've got a very young baby at home, so we're not sleeping great. So these kinds of things are like A++++. So I actually really like these and when I run out of my little stock, I would buy them again because they're the only eye masks I feel like I'm comfortable wearing where they don't slip around. But this is their Glow Getter Mist and this has glacier water, lavender oil, evening pro primrose oil, and it's supposed to be just kind of hydrating and nourishing. I will spray this on just my bare skin, almost as kind of like a toner or uh, more of an essence maybe. It just kind of refreshes my skin. It hydrates it just a little bit. The mister is actually pretty good. You shake it up and you spray it on. I don't like to put this on top of my makeup. I know some people use it that way. I use setting sprays plenty on top of my makeup, but I don't love this because I do feel like it's, it starts to break my makeup apart a little bit more because it does have those oils in it. Um, so I prefer using this under, but I do enjoy it. Is this something that if I ran out of, I would feel the desperate need to buy again? Not necessarily. I think it is nice. And if you are planning on buying a bunch of Wander Beauty or it sounds like this is up your alley, go for it, especially if you have dry skin. So the next thing I like to put on is this Catch the Light Highlighter and Glotion. Now I only use part of this. This is two different products. And this is what I mean by things being travel friendly. So in the main squeezy tube portion is this glow lotion they're calling it lotion and it's just a really creamy kind of almost moisturizer that has a little bit of pearlescence to it so i'll usually focus that on my cheeks and then maybe sometimes on my forehead i don't like to put it on my nose because i don't need any more shine on my nose necessarily and plus that's an area that i feel like my makeup breaks apart so i try to put less on my nose when possible but the other portion of this i didn't use today but i do enjoy is you take off this cap and it's just a creamy highlighter stick. And so I'll sometimes take this and just kind of dot it on and then blend it with my finger. I'll blend it with a sponge or I'll even take my sponge against it and then tap it into those areas, even a little bit on my forehead. It's a really pretty consistency. I feel like you can find cream highlighters or like stick highlighters like this anywhere and they're pretty good. But I do find that this one does blend easily into the skin because I have tried some highlighter sticks that I feel like I put on and I've got a landing strip and I can't blend it up or down like it's just not moving. I do feel like this one blends pretty well, which I, I think is nice. Again, I've tried many, many Glotions and Highlighter Sticks and I think you can find this kind of product anywhere. I don't think this one's anything crazy special, but I do like the packaging. So again, it's kind of deciding what your taste is. And these products aren't aren't cheap. I mean, these a lot of these are around the $40 price range. So you know, for you to go out and buy all of these would be insane. I would say as you're watching this, if there's just something that you're like, that's the solution I've been looking for, that's when you'd wanna buy it. But if it's just kinda meh, I wouldn't, you know. So what did I put on my face now? Oh, concealer. So I have two shades of this. I used, okay, I have fair and light, and I used light today. In fact, that's usually what I use. They're not that big of a difference, honestly. It's almost indiscernible, but I've been using light, so this is their Dualist Concealer, and basically on one side you have this matte stick concealer. It's actually very creamy, but not so creamy that it doesn't stay in place. And then the other side is their Illuminating Liquid, so again, it's kind of a liquid highlighter with a little doe foot. And what I did is I applied this to my inner corner using the matte stick, and I like to just blend it in with my finger. I think a sponge shears it out too much, but my ring finger does such a perfect job keeping it in that area and really brightening that area. And then I use the highlighter liquid just in my kind of like on my, the top of my cheekbone, and I'll even let it kind of come up here a little bit just to help brighten the area even more. And so, this is one of my favorite products from Wander Beauty. I think it's sold out on their site. Is this one of the ones? I think it was sold out on their site, but you can buy these on Sephora and stuff. So um, I just love it. I think the idea of these two together is nothing revolutionary. I think there have been plenty of brands that have done this, but their stick is so good. I am very picky about stick concealers. It has to be able to be creamy enough to blend really nicely, but not so oily and creamy that it won't stay in place. And this one does exactly what I need it to do. Now, you saw when I was applying it that this thing actually just popped out. So you have to be careful about not rolling it up all the way because you can see mine fell out. Um, which drives me crazy, like especially with a brand this expensive, you think, I don't know the mechanics of how they, you know, get this into there. Obviously, it could happen with any brand, but when you're spending this much money, it's like, I feel like that shouldn't happen. I don't know. 
regardless, I really like this. Again, if I ran out of this, I could see myself buying this again as well because I'm a big fan. Now, honestly, when I use this up, I'll probably just move on to the fair because they're so close in um, their shades. But I will say I do think you need to set this. So where my fine lines start right about there, I had a little bit of the cream there and it was kind of meeting up with the illuminating portion. And I do feel like I had to set that. So the next step I took was using my, well, I might have done this later in the look, but I love their Wander Beauty Wanderlust Powder Foundation. This is something you've probably seen ads for like on Facebook. That's how I heard of it. And when I saw it, I literally hopped onto Sephora, ordered it right away and moved on. This powder foundation is such high coverage. It comes with a sponge. I obviously haven't used very much. I have two shades of this as well. This is the light and I also have the fair. Actually, I might have ended up giving the fair to my sister. Anyway, it's a very high coverage powder foundation. So I always see, I know I've mentioned in another video where you see the person swiping it onto their face and it's just like complete coverage. It is so satisfying to watch. Anyway, I do, I really like this. I think if you have oily skin, you'll like it even more because it really, really soaks up the shine. However, I don't think it soaks it up so much that if you have, if you have dry skin like me, I think it still does a nice job. I think if you put a ton on, it would emphasize texture. I mean, there's there's no denying that. But I'll put, like with just a brush, I'll take some and just, I'll set my under eye with it, I'll set my T-zone with it, and even my chin a little bit. And I feel like it does such a nice job of, you can still see my skin breathing through it, but it kind of cancels out any shine where you don't want it. You know, a lot of times on my under eye, if it's too shiny, it just looks weird and I look more tired than I was to begin with. You know what I mean? And this does such a great job. Again, if you put too much, it will emphasize texture, especially on your fine lines. This isn't my favorite way to set my under eye, but it does work. So again, in that way, I view this as a multitasker in my head. So on my cheeks today, I have these on the glow blush little dual sticks. And I have two shades. I have the one in nude glow and soft pink. And then I have the one in Nude Glow and Bare. Nude Glow and Bare is my favorite. Soft Pink is just too pink. It's just too, too pink for me. But Bare, um, hold on. Amazon's delivering a package and Pinocchio is barking. It's his favorite time of day. FedEx, UPS, Amazon, USPS. It's just like all day long, he's just the happiest dog. So the shade Bare is what I put on my cheeks. So this is a dual ended product. On one end, you've got the Stick Cream Blush. And on the other end, you have the stick cream, what I would consider a highlight. So this one I think is such a nice neutral color. And what I'll do is take my sponge and just kind of get a little bit onto it and then just tap it onto my cheek region. And I just think it looks lovely. I really do. It stays on surprisingly long. And every once in a while, I'll even take my sponge, dip it in the powder and put a little bit over it just to kind of set it in. Of course, you could also put a powder blush on top of it, but I kind of like the look it gives, kind of like this glow because it is a cream. So then I'll take my sponge and get into the highlight side, tap it into that and tap that onto my cheekbone. And again, I think it blends really quickly and easily. I don't like taking this kind of a stick either side and just putting it directly on because I think it just makes it harder to blend. This is not a, like, you know, my Flower Beauty um, liquid blush that I'm obsessed with. That one you could blend and blend and it'll keep moving around for you and it's so beautiful. This is not one that'll keep moving around. I think you've got about 20 seconds of moving time and then it's gonna stay, which is what you want it to do. But that's why I usually use it, put it on my sponge first and then tap it into the skin. Now, one tip I do have for you, if you put on a cream blush and you feel like, ooh, it's not, it's a little bit too much, I'll usually get a little bit more of my foundation or if my sponge still has a little bit on it and just tap it over and it ends up kind of evening everything out, which is what I did today. So on my eyes, I put on a drugstore eye primer, but I used an eye primer and then I used their palette. I think this is the only palette they have and it's their Wanderess Fever palette. And the packaging is really cute, but I it shows fingerprints so much it drives me bonkers. It comes with this dual ended brush that keeps falling out, so I just took it out, but it's got kind of a crease brush, if you will, and then a flat maybe shader brush. I've used it once and it was okay. It's not horrible, but it is small and it's a little harder. But if you don't have anything or if you're on the go and you're in a pinch, this would absolutely work. I mean, you can totally do an eye look with it. I'm just a spoiled brat. So it comes with five eyeshadows and then a blush and a highlight. I've actually used the blush and highlight as eyeshadows and they're beautiful too. I mean, you can kind of do whatever you want with it. I do think that anytime a palette has really small pans like these of blush and highlight, 
it drives me crazy because you it's so hard to get your blush brush in it so what i've ended up doing is taking my blush brush and swirling it in both because i think it just gives a really pretty soft pink look and i'll put that on my cheeks i don't have it on today since i already had blush on but it is pretty so that's one way i would i would recommend using it i love these shadows there's okay so what i put on my eyes today is this kind of darker kind of brown bronzy color and these are so shimmery they're so surprisingly pigmented so i put that all over the lid and then i blended it and then i used this kind of the only matte shade in here it's almost a satin matte but it's kind of a light tan color and i use that to kind of blend it into the crease a bit and then i topped it with i really used all the shadows this kind of more golden shade i tapped onto the lid and then i even tapped a little of this light kind of almond colored shade just on the middle portion of my eye and then the more red shimmery shade i tapped a little bit onto the outer corner i just think these are so beautiful i think it creates such a nice everyday look you could totally amp it up but i like for me this is like ideal it is so ideal and i think it creates just enough dimension if you like neutrals like me to look really nice but it's nothing crazy you could wear it to work you could wear it anywhere um so I think the formula of these is amazing. They blend beautifully. I can't wait for them to come out with more palettes because I was so, so impressed with the quality of this. Now it's expensive. So you'd think of course the quality better be there. And I agree with you, but I feel like there are other brands I've tried at Sephora that are really expensive that I'll, I'll try their eyeshadow and be like, mm. like um, Lila B. Those are really expensive palettes. And I have this little quad, actually I think they sent me and I just was not impressed with the quality. And I thought, this is an expensive little quad they sent, but I just wasn't impressed. But this, lovely, lovely, lovely. I did need to pull in like a matte kind of lighter beige to be able to do like my brow bone and maybe help blend things. So I, I always use my Wet n Wild Brulee with almost every palette. So I don't think it's completely complete because I think it needs this and maybe one more like matte deeper shade, but I really do like this palette a lot. All right, let's talk lips. So they have quite a few lip options. I was surprised when I was kind of looking around their site. So the first thing I just tried on my lips, it's not what's on it now, is their Beach Balm. I have it in the shade Dulce or Dolce, depending on the language you're speaking. Um, and this is just a kind of lighter, almost glossy balm, but it definitely has some color to it. I think this color is really pretty, very summery and comfortable to wear. So I've worn this quite a few times. When I'm just going out, maybe I'm just going out to grab some coffee or whatever. I think it's such a pretty everyday shade. It's nothing crazy, but it definitely helps pull your look together. Just a little bit more than just wearing lip balm would do, which is usually what I wear. So I, I actually really like this. I could see myself trying and loving some more shades of that, but I really like that shade in particular. So one of their more um, travel friendly, if you will, dual products is their Lip Setter. And it's their dual lipstick and liner. So I have two different ones. I have Bold in Beijing. And then I also have On the Mauve. So on one end, you've got a lip liner that twists up. And then on the other end, you have a lip color. And the shape of it is kind of like a, just a little round thing. But it works out pretty well to fill in your lips. I really like this shade. I almost wore it today with this look. But I wanted to try one more lip color. And I ended up just leaving this one on. But I really like On The Mob. I think it's a really pretty look together. But just so you can see the shades, this is Bold in Beijing. It's a little more red toned than On The Mob. Um, you can see, but it's really, really pretty. I could see Bold in Beijing being pretty at the holidays and I really like On The Mob for like fall. So I like that these are together. I've been telling my husband about these because I'm like, I just think these are, this whole line is so cool the way they've incorporated the idea of travel and wanderlust and all of that into their products. And I think these are really, really nice. And the formula is nice and comfortable. You're gonna have to reapply after a few hours. It's a, it's a very classic lipstick feel, but I do feel like all of their lipsticks are very creamy. So what I have on my lips today, and I might reapply a little bit, they have their dual lipstick. So you can buy a dual lipstick where there's two shades and then the middle portion, which serves as the lid for both of them. So then I also have two other shades that have their actual lid, so I could kind of mix and match these if I want and just switch the lids on them, which I think is great. So the shade I'm actually wearing today is BB, and this is a very creamy formula. It's just like a nice kind of bright-ish pink, kind of a mid-tone pink, huh? 
but I think this is so pretty for like springtime. Again, I'm not using any lip liner with it. I don't think it is flawless without lip liner, but I think it's nice enough that I don't feel like I need to go dig out a lip liner. But I will say I've been drinking coffee, so a little bit is worn off, but not a crazy amount. But again, this is a very classic lipstick formula, but I do think it's creamier than most other lipsticks. So let me show you the other shades I have. This is Riviera, and this is a little bit deeper of a color right there. Again, these are so creamy. So then I also have Barely There and Hot Gossip. And Hot Gossip, I feel like, is um, very much a trendy color, or at least it was maybe like last year, the past few years. Um, and then this one's just a little bit lighter. Again, all of them are very creamy. The, the quality seems to be pretty consistent across all of the shades I have, at least. So I also have their mascara. Now this, a lot of people received in their BoxyCharm a couple months ago, and they call it their Unlashed Volume and Curl Mascara. Okay, so I opened this, well, probably about two months ago, and I'd been trying it, and I did not like it. I really didn't, and I knew a lot of you guys, like half of you guys were like, no, that's my holy girl, I love it, and the other half of you guys were like, yeah, I hated it too. Well, I hadn't used it in the past few weeks because I had just written it off as, you know what, I've used it enough, I don't like it. I've used it probably eight to 10 times, and every single time it was just like underwhelming. It wasn't bad, but it didn't hold the curl as well, it didn't volumize as well, it didn't really lengthen. Well, I used it again for this video today, and I was like, it's so much better. So I think the key is letting it dry out. Now, of course, giving it a month and a half to dry out is kind of ridiculous for a mascara. If you're buying it, you probably want to use it right away. And I just, I feel like once it dried out a little bit, it separated my lashes, it curled them, it lengthened them, it volumized so much more than what it was doing. And I know that that's true for a good amount of mascaras, but I have another one in a box that I think once I've used this up, because now I really do like it. I'm like, well, I'm traveling in a few days. Maybe I'll just bring it with me, at least when I'm filming this. I'm probably putting it up later. But um, I'm like, well, maybe I'll open the next one and see, like, is it good right off the bat? Was this just a weird one that needed the time to dry? You know what I'm saying? So mascara is so weird like that. But I do, I really like it now. So if you have it maybe from the BoxyCharm and you tried it initially, you didn't like it, maybe pull it back out and try it now because... I don't know, it, it, it's so much better now. It's more like the Lash Paradise that I love from L'Oreal. So those are my thoughts on the best and worst of Wander Beauty. I know I was looking at their website today and I saw now they've got, and maybe they had it before, they have a foundation stick, they have an actual foundation. They have so many other things, I'm like, dang, I didn't know they had that. So I might try some more stuff and maybe do a part two to this um, in a few months. Let me know if you'd actually be interested in that or not. I think this is a really cool brand that's really coming up through the ranks quickly. And that's why I was so excited to give it a try and let you guys know my thoughts. It is my job after all. And I'm very thankful to have that job. So I hope you enjoyed. I hope you'll subscribe to catch more of my brand best and worst. I'll link some of my more recent best and worst videos of brands. I've done a lot of drugstore brands like Flower Beauty, Wet n Wild, um, all kinds of brands. So I will link those below if you're curious to keep watching. And other than that, I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.